don't have to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Because if it's just all by faith, then why are we even praying with the people, right? And this is a dumb doctrine, and it's always popping up, and, and so I constantly have to, to keep pinning this thing down, okay? Our soul winning method is and always has been to preach the gospel to people and then lead them to call upon the Lord by faith. Genesis 4, all the way through the Old Testament and New Testament, calling upon the name of the Lord is salvation. Now, are there a ton of verses that say we're saved by faith? Absolutely. But guess what? Faith and the calling upon the name of the Lord go hand in hand. For it, I'll give you your, your free gift. What person in their right mind would say, well, that's not a free gift then. Because I had to ask for it. But this is the kind of stupidity and vain jangling that people are teaching today when they attack the sinner's prayer. Like, oh, well, you got to ask for it. That's works. What? There's no other area in life where we would believe that. I never said you have to pray out loud. I never said you have to bow your head. I never said you have to close your eyes. But the moment that somebody understands the gospel, understands that they're a sinner on their way to hell, if they don't verbally or in their head call out to God and say, Lord, save me, they're going to die and go to hell. This is actually what Jesus Christ said in John 4, verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, what is the gift of God? Eternal life. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So Jesus says, if you knew what the gift is and who it was that was telling you this, you know, you would have asked for that gift, and he would have given thee living water. Right after that, we see the one. But here's the thing, folks. Let's say he had that enlightening time, you know, the, that moment, and then he just says, but I'm still not going to get saved. See, I believe an individual like that can become a reprobate. Because right. yeah. now if they say, I get it. you really believe in your heart you will call on him for salvation it's just like somebody who's drowning in water if somebody's drowning in water and they believe they're going to die and they believe that they have no hope to be saved and there's somebody standing beside the water they'll scream out help and that's what john jesus said in john chapter 4 where he said if thou knewest the gift of god and who it is that saith to thee give him give me to drink thou wouldst have asked of him and he would have given thee living water and so the same sort of idea that if somebody is drowning in water and you know what, they, they're, they're going to die and they want to be saved, they're going to call out and ask to be saved if they really believe it. And so now if you're sitting here and say, well, I've never called upon the name of the Lord and I'm never going to. Well, then you know what? Enjoy hell. All right. When people start teaching this garbage that you don't have to ask for salvation, that calling upon the name of the Lord is works, mark that person and have no fellowship with them. Mark them, because they're teaching a wicked, false doctrine. It's false. It's, it's not true. And you're messing with salvation. When someone messes with salvation, I no longer want to have anything to do with that person. No young football player say, Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save my soul. I do now receive Jesus as my Savior. Woo! I tell you, the fireworks of heaven turned loose in my soul. I mean, the Roman candles started shooting toward the sky, and the fireworks began to go off, and the light of the, the uh, firecrackers popped, and the sparklers sparkled, and all of a sudden I was consumed. And while he was praying, I said, Here's something little Jackie boy can do. I said, That young man was on his way to hell to burn in the fires of hell forever and ever and ever and now he's saved his name is written in heaven he's redeemed his sins are forgiven he's god's child he's not going to go to hell and i was consumed i jumped up off my knees and read the bible says in romans 10 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe and and shall believe in thine heart that god hath raised him from the dead Thou shalt be saved. One fellow came and sat down beside me who turned out to be a student at the university here uh, at the Penn Middle Tennessee State University, and I started talking to him for a few moments. I said, where are you going, buddy? He said, uh, 
so, so I said, no, no, no. I mean, where are you going when you die? Uh, he said, well, I, I don't know. I said, you don't know where you're going? I said, man, listen, you, would you be interested in knowing where you can? You, and to make a long story short, he prayed with me and he accepted Christ as his Savior. He got down and in just a few minutes, she bowed her head and prayed and asked Jesus to save her. I think I've won 35 or 40 people to the Lord in Cracker Barrels.